In this episode of the Global Travel Channel podcast show, I'm going to get behind the lens with a young Italian travel photographer. More next. Hello and welcome to the Global Travel Channel podcast show. My name is Mark Philpot. On the show, we talk to people from across the world about all things related to travel, from amazing adventures to inspiring stories to the not so well known destinations. We cover it all. You can find all of our previous podcast episodes on our Global Travel Channel website by visiting www.globaltravelchannel.com. The Global Travel Channel is a collaboration between travel writers, photographers, YouTubers, podcasters, and bloggers from across the world. We bring you information that we hope makes your next travel experience an awesome one, no matter where you decide to travel to. You can also find the Global Travel Channel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us so that you can keep updated on our new content postings as and when they happen. You can even now support us through our Patreon page, for as little as the price of a cup of coffee per month, you can help us continue to produce this podcast show. Any contributions you make are greatly appreciated. Now on to today's show. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely enjoy taking photographs. And it's probably never been easier than it is right now to be able to take a photograph. With that in mind, I wanted to have my guest on the show today because he is a young budding photographer, a travel photographer, and I really wanted everybody to hear his incredible story of taking photographs around the world. So without any further delay, I would like to welcome to the show, all the way from Italy, Pietro Sassanelli. Hey, ciao, Pietro. Welcome to the show today. Oh, ciao to you, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me here. How are, how are things? Are you having a good day? Yes, yes, definitely having a good day. Uh, day off um, and uh, managed to do some editing on my laptop. So it's definitely a great day. Fantastic. Now, is this your first time ever on a podcast show? Yes, it's definitely my first time ever and I'm pretty excited. Great, because I, I love having first time people on my show because I get to ask them all sorts of random questions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> so... I thought what I would do is just to get you a little bit warmed up, I would um, ask you a crazy question about something that comes into my head in the minute now, um, and you have to answer the question, okay? So let's try that. Sure. Let's... So my random question for you today is, uh, what's your favorite TV series? Oh, interesting question. I think it might be Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome, Breaking Bad. I, w I actually wanted to use the music from Breaking Bad on my podcast show, but um, of course that's not possible, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, I love that show. It's so good, yeah? So good. Yeah, great production and very surprising every time. Okay, so you've started off very well on your first podcast, <laughs> Pietro. <laughs> now, you're, um, you're a travel photographer, and I, I met you, I think, for the first time probably a couple of years ago now and uh, when, three years ago three years ago okay and yes. when i when i first met you and i saw your photographs i just thought wow you you have a really amazing talent so i wanted to have you on the show today because i want to share your story with the world and uh let's start at the very beginning so why don't you tell everybody obviously you're italian whereabouts in italy are you from oh i'm uh south italian i'm from the beautiful city of Bari. not a lot of people know about it but um is um uh, probably a lot of Australians have been there, maybe also American, because it's the quickest way from Italy to Greece and Croatia. Um, it's just it's, up the uh, road from Brindisi, right? Yes, just up the road from Brindisi. I think it's about uh, 80k, so uh, even less than that. So for people um, that are not too familiar with Italy, if you're looking at a map of Italy and you, and you know where Naples is, it's across, almost directly across the, the country on the other side. It's on the Adriatic coast of yes. Italy, uh, away from Naples, yeah? Oh, what there's is it, a, there's a, a three hours drive is it from yes it's naples about three, to, three hours yeah. driving from naples but um if you if you look at italy like a big book basically we are on the hill but mm. like the very bottom on the right side mm, mm. 
So uh, not far away from Catania and Sicily and, and down there, right? That's, that's the opposite side. It takes me, I think, about three to four hours to get there. It okay. is very small, even though it's dense and full of places, but very small. Yeah. So what's what's cool about Bari? What what can you tell us about your hometown? Oh, it's um, uh, probably the, the biggest feature is the, we call it Lungomare, which is uh, the seashore. It's one of the longest in Italy um, and it's built, uh, I think, like uh, it has been, it's been built uh, for a very long time. So that means that you can see the different styles in the building. Mm. Uh, and you can see building from the middle each middle area till modern area uh let's say it goes through basically i think uh 15th centuries till now and they mm. keep building so you see the variation of the styles mm -hmm. um and is um it's a, definitely a beautiful place and it's a place where you stop visiting my city but then it's beautiful to venture in the old town um, I'm actually very passionate about the old town because the architecture in the old town is absolutely amazing. Mm. The uh, food in the old town is amazing. You see um, old women making fresh pasta on the uh, on the street, mm. uh, make fresh focaccia. Um, everyone cooking basically fresh food, so you can always smell this nice uh, homey kind of food while walking uh, in the old town. And it's beautiful because you get to walk on the old town because there's a there's a big wall you walk on and you can see on the left side the old town on the right side you can see the seashore mm. so it's just a um I, I think i'll i'll probably send you a couple of pictures of it because uh it's um uh, i'm i'd be keen to have more visitors from overseas in my city it's a it's a gem and not everyone knows about it but yeah okay. definitely cheap cheap beautiful food and uh, a lot of history and even great landscape I'd, I'd say plus all around my city we got blue flag water uh, mm. and blue flag it's a, a way uh, of the italian government to evaluate the quality of the water in the sea so mm. the, the cleanest water get this blue flag and all around bar is all blue flag basically mm. Mm. Um, the water is crystal clear and always very warm pleasant now i tell you what after we've um after you've done your photography career, you may as well become a tourist officer for, for Italy because you do a very good job on uh, explaining your hometown very well. You're very passionate about it, which is good. But uh, listen, you're not you're not talking to us from Italy today. Whereabouts are you today? I'm talking from Sydney and it's the place where I've been based for the last three years. Um, before then, I uh, was in uh, Gold Coast where we met, mm. and uh, I've been spending a little bit of time uh, uh, in uh, New Zealand, eight months. Mm. So how I've you, been definitely like having a little Zealand? bit of space. Uh, New Zealand is a beautiful country. Um, mm. Sorry, can you only... say that again? Because I'm not sure everyone listening can hear that. <laughs> I think the New Zealand, well, being a landscape photographer, New Zealand is, a, is definitely a dream for a landscape photographer. And um, I'd say that it's a beautiful country. The only thing that I can't cope with is the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we all left. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm from South Italy, so for me it's even worse. I'm used to that <laughs> mild, nice, oh, actually very hot summer. And uh, when I was in, in, in summer in New Zealand, I, I felt a bit uh, underwhelmed. <laughs> Now, I just had uh, another guest on my show a few days ago who was uh, living for a little while in New Zealand. She wasn't a New Zealander. She was a, another European like you. And I asked her a question about New Zealand ice cream, whether she liked New Zealand ice cream. And she gave me a very horrific answer. She said she didn't like the New Zealand ice cream. Do you like the New Zealand ice cream or are you very passionate about your gelato? You know, you can't ask me this question. <laughs> I'm Italian. Of course, I'm gonna love. I'm gonna love my gelato. I have the New Zealand ice cream, um, and I guess like when you so far away from home and you can't have your gelato, is um, is a, a gap filler. It, it filled my void and my need of gelato. <laughs> a good answer. Good answer. Now today we're <laughs> going to spend most of our time talking about photography because it's your yes. passion and it's why I wanted to have you on the show. Why don't you tell us about how you first got excited about photography? Where, where did that journey begin for you? Uh, that's um, <clears throat> actually a really interesting story because um, I remember uh, probably seven years ago 
while I was um, starting uh, my uni, I met this girl and she was a really passionate photographer. And she actually asked me to model for her. So I kind of start at the other end of the camera. And um, yeah, so she took a picture of me and then she invited me to this, uh, this show, to this art show, and she displayed my picture. It was quite an embarrassing uh, situation because I wasn't expecting to see my face on uh, on different frames show to uh, an incredible amount of people. That was a bit of a weird sensation, but um, it definitely started this um, uh, friendship uh, that uh, I still uh, treasure these days. Mm. And um, she got me started into photography. She started suggesting me the brands for my first camera and tell me something about the lenses, all the basic uh, um, things to start with. Um, and uh, to be honest, in the beginning, I uh, basically started taking pictures with my phone and editing on my computer. And then at some point, I realized that I needed some uh, different tool to get the job done, just to express my feeling, my emotions, and show the beauty around me. And that gave me the idea of like, okay, let's invest some money into my first camera. And that's how it all started. Mm, fantastic. Now, you've mm -hmm. made a lot of people jealous because a, a young, beautiful Italian girl comes up to you and asks you to take photos of her. How many times does that happen in your life? Like this must be a very a rare, rare thing to happen, right? For you to start. Oh, I was, I was, I was very lucky though because I had a New Zealander girl, a Kiwi girl, and she asked me to uh, get some picture done together, and so we did actually. Oh, fantastic! So you actually <laughs> had already a connection then to New Zealand. Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, definitely. fantastic! You're you're going to be very successful if you keep connecting with New Zealanders. That's, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. So, um, so how old were you then when when that uh, part of your journey started with photography? Uh, that was, um, I think I was 25. Yes, 25 years old. 25 okay. years young, I'd say. 25 years young. And how old are you now? Now I'm 32 years young. 32. So, so you've been doing it for around about seven years. Yes, yes. But and, I'd say more seriously, probably in the last three to four years. Mm. And what, yes. what, what, what do you call serious? Like what, what's the dream for you when it comes to photography? What would you ultimately like to do with it? Oh, well, that's a, that's a big question. But um, first thing first, when I say serious is actually to uh, make some effort and to save in order to buy tools to make photography. So that's why I say serious. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so uh, my ultimate goal, well, that, it's not such a thing like the ultimate goal because life keeps changing and we evolve throughout our life. So I can tell you what's my ultimate goal in 10 years. And that is to probably go on into the uh, teaching uh, area because I like to share with people and I like uh, transform life of people. Mm -hmm. So I think that photography is one of those tools because um, I've seen people getting up travel through the photography and also because with photography you can um, share messages and you can uh, I'm very passionate about of, of course because I'm into uh, landscape photography I'm very passionate about this world and mm. one of the way to um, save our world is to show the beauty in our world and the uh, delicate system that is our world mm. so uh, yes I'd really love to get into uh, teaching a little bit of the time and maybe do uh, courses while traveling. Mm -hmm. That is the uh, how I can see myself from uh, probably in the next 10 years or so. Okay. So I'm interested to know in your eyes, what makes a good photographer? Oh, a good photographer. It's um, everyone can be a good photographer. Is, um, is, that, is uh, that true though? Can mm -hmm. everybody be a good photographer? Definitely, everyone can be a good photographer. It just mm. takes some uh, appreciation and learn to see through the camera. So, um, and camera by camera, I mean any camera it could be your phone. It, you you develop your eyes, and you see what your lens is seeing, and then when you get that connection, you can actually capture the picture the way you envision it. So it's it's a matter of practice in the end of the day. And that why I, that's that's the reason why I say that everyone could be a great photographer because you practice, you practice, and you practice capturing what you see in your mind, and then in the end of the day you're going to be able to understand through the use of different techniques how to capture and make 
what you see in your mind via on a screen or on mm. a piece of paper. Mm. So it's it's definitely a matter of um, uh, it's just how, how you translate your ideas into reality. Mm. Do you think it's a bit like when people go to an art gallery to look at art and there's a distinct appreciation from some people on certain pieces of artwork is the same in photography as as a photographer do you look at certain photographs and go wow that's much better than you know the standard the normal thing that i usually look at can you pinpoint something in a photograph that stands out for you all the time when you look at photos yes you can definitely you can definitely understand the difference between a uh, someone that does it all the time and is driven and is it loves photography mm. uh, because you can see difference in the composition, the way that uh, the picture is edited, the colors. Uh, because the photo itself is it's not just the moment that you press the shutter button, it's the thought that goes before you take the picture and also the process where you editing your pictures and you're getting your picture at that stage that you actually look at it as a complete product. Mm. So it's an, it's an artistic process. And that's why you can pinpoint, okay, I like the colors in that picture. I like the composition. I like the perspective. Um, and I like the idea behind it because it's communicating me some emotions. Mm. So, yeah, definitely it's, uh, it's, it's very much like art at the end of the day. And, and it's why I'm also passionate about art, mm. visual arts mm. and music. Yeah, right. I, I, I go back to this thing we were talking about earlier about how everybody can be a photographer today because of the um, evolution of smartphones. And what I'm finding really interesting on my podcast show is when I go to do my research on my guest, uh, the first place I go to is their Facebook page because they have lots of photos of their life there. And I can quickly get a feeling and a sense of what that person likes to do and, and you know what their family's like and where they travel to just because of the photographs. So I think photos today more so than ever because one, we share more than we ever have before when it comes to photography. There's an incredible number of photographs online from all sorts of different platforms that have never been there in the quantity that they are today in the past years. So I think photography plays a different role in our lives today would you agree with that yes i uh, definitely agree with that um and uh i think photography is uh uh definitely a way uh we're, we're leaving footprints on this world and it's a way to leave something behind mm. Mm. absolutely now there's going to be a lot of people listening to the show today who are travelers as i said and there might be some people that have thought okay i'm really interested to hear what this guy's got to say about photography and where he started and what kind of gear and that you got. You talked about in the early days, you went out and you made an investment to, to get into it in a more serious way. What type type of gear did you actually buy for your first step? Oh, when, when I first started, I just bought my uh, first mirrorless camera. It was just the uh, lightest things I could find at the time because my idea was to travel with the camera. So I really had in my mind the idea of making things easier for myself. Mm. And can, then, can you can you explain to the naive of us listening what you mean by a mirrorless camera? Well, a mirrorless camera is basically a camera without uh, a mirror because in a DLSR or uh, so well-known profession, all the times professional cameras, there was a mirror inside and there still is a mirror inside. And it's this mirror that allows you to get the picture into the center of the camera. A mirrorless camera doesn't have a mirror so it doesn't reflect the image in the sensor but the image is captured straight into the sensor mm. um, that makes uh, the camera way lighter so easier for transportation because it gets smaller and you can shrink the camera and put more stuff in a little uh, package basically mm. okay so this is the technical side and um, but the good stuff is that uh, with the evolution of the cameras these days uh, mirrorless camera have reached that point where uh, they pretty much comparable with the DLSR. So now we are at that stage where it doesn't really matter where you go for a mirrorless camera or a node style DLSR camera because they're both going to deliver a great result. Mm -hmm. But in the end of the day, now we're, we're talking about a camera, but as I said before, you know, photography is not really about the camera itself. The camera is a tool that you've got. For example, these days people use drones and mm. myself, I use a drone too. Mm. Uh, the camera on a drone is not that great, but you make it work. Um, people use uh, GoPros. 
they can take 4K videos. I've got a GoPro myself, um, and uh, you can take amazing picture with just a GoPro, and it's only a 12 megapixel sensor, shrink in a really, really little package, but you can still make it work because you think about your picture, uh, you uh, have that process that I told you before where you actually know what you're doing, you know what you want to achieve, and then, you know, whatever camera you have, you make it work. So why not? Even the phone would be okay these days. I took one of the pictures uh, that I posted on my social uh, in Italy with my phone. I mm. just put it in Photoshop, clean it up a little bit, mm. and post it. And I think it's probably one of my favorite pictures that I took in, in, in it, that I've taken in Italy. So it's um, you know, it's a uh, professional uh, means a lot of things. Was, as I was saying before, it's investing in your tools. But it's not just investing in your camera, investing in your education, investing on your software for editing. Hmm. It's um, we, it's a broader uh, definition. So what what kind of budget did you have when you first started, when you first bought your first mirrorless camera seven years ago? How much did that cost you? My first camera costed me uh, probably 500 Australian dollars, I'd say, 500. which in Italy was about 250 euros. And was that a fairly high level, high end camera at that stage back then? No, it was an entry level camera, entry level camera, mm. but still mm. decent quality, still able to capture raw file. Mm. So um, uh, it was it was definitely a good way to explore, um, like the beginning of you know my camera journey, how to use the uh, different modalities, so the uh, portrait mode, the aperture mode, the shutter mode, uh, uh, manual mode, and just get off the automatic mode, basically. Mm. Well, I, I've got to put my hand up and admit while I'm talking to you here that I'm one of these guys that takes out my camera, throws it on automatic mode, and goes and shoots 100 photos without even thinking about it. And I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that because I know that the camera that I have has much more capacity than what I do. And I, I think that's one of the challenges, isn't it? If you buy a piece of equipment and you don't really research what it can do for you you don't get to use it at its best capability do you yes but it's also a matter of your interest if you if you want to use the camera as a it's like you're okay if you want to be a brighter you know how to choose the proper words and you need to study in order to uh, achieve that or you need to practice in order to achieve that mm. uh, if you're a painter you need to, to get the right brushes you can't just get one kind of brush and use it all the time. If you're a photographer, you want to know how to use your tool. So you, you want to know how to use your tripod. You want to know how to use your camera and how to get the best out of it. So get off the automatic mode and decide for yourself the aperture of your camera, the shutter speed of your camera and so on. Mm. And if you want to be a podcast, you got to learn to talk properly. Yes, exactly. So I can't do <laughs> <quit>. it. <laughs> no, no, I was talking about myself. I need to keep practicing. Ah, no, you're great, Mike. You're great. You've always been great. <laughs> now, listen, you mentioned earlier about, and I want to bring this up because I know there's yeah. a lot of people sitting out there thinking about this um, Photoshopping. Yes. Yeah? So is this cheating? Is this taking the real reality of what a photographer actually saw and clicked in their lens and then took it home and started reworking it and coming out with a completely different result? What, what's this whole thing about Photoshopping? Oh, this is a big debate in the photography community too, because there's uh, people using uh, uh, still using film cameras, which I actually adore personally. Mm. Um, well, Photoshop is not entirely cheating. is um, is a is another tool to achieve your vision. Uh, most of the time, cameras um, haven't got that um, color range. They they can't capture the whole color range and the uh, um, and everything that you actually see with your eyes because your eyes are more powerful than a camera. Mm. So how do you bring back those colors that you've seen in real life where well, you can use Photoshop? And sometimes you can do things like swapping your skies or slightly change your colors. Well, you do that because you have your uh, an artistic vision in your mind. It's like a painter's deciding to paint the uh, uh, sky orange. Uh, I get, or I get, I guess. I guess it's no different really than a YouTuber going home and editing their videos and playing around with that, right? It's the same kind of concept. Yes, because when you, when you, uh, when I record a video, I, I'm actually getting into a videography a little bit at a time. You need to cut uh, your um, uh, videos 
and then you need to put together something that is like uh, it's more of an artistic vision something that is like you know goes well together and then you've got to adapt the video to that music and then you do a little bit of color grading or color adjustment for your videos so even that is actually artistic mm. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with that so you think photoshopping is okay and you photoshop all of your photos sometimes i do sometimes i don't um it depends uh Sometimes I've got a simple vision and I like what I can capture with simple colors. Some of the time I, I, I feel like I need to add something else to the picture in order to uh, drive people to uh, that or, or actually in order to bring the feeling that I, that I was feeling at that time when I, when I uh, took the actual picture. Hmm. So I, that's why I'm saying it's just a, a matter of what you need in order to achieve what you want. And you mm. decide, okay, I need Photoshop or no, I don't need Photoshop. I, I look at a lot of the I look at a lot of these photos on Instagram nowadays and I just feel as though they've gone too far. Like they stand out so Photoshop that it's kind of unrealistic. It doesn't give me it gives me a sense of fakeness. Um do you do you see that sometimes as well and think that? Um sometimes uh that fakeness is appropriate, some other time is is just not appropriate. Uh, again, is a is just a. It depends what you wanna what you wanna achieve. Mm. Um, for example, you can uh, paint a storm into your picture, and in that case, you wanna uh, kind of uh, uh, you, you know you wanna you wanna get your audience to be to be scared or to uh, to feel moody, and in that case, Photoshop is the right answer. Some other time you want to convey a simple a simple message or you want to convey some sort of calmness in your picture, stillness, and then maybe you don't need that much Photoshop. You just need to correct the color to achieve, uh, the, to, to kind of uh, pick the color to get to the rear colors because I said before, the camera is not able to, to capture the, the whole spectrum of colors and light the way your eyes can see it. Mm. So, uh, yes, uh, some people take it a bit too far, but that's only... Uh, you know your personal interpretation and how you see things mm. because everyone has got a, you know a different way to look at things it's like music someone likes does music mm. someone else hates does music mm. uh, someone else loves future music which is mm. does to the next level and someone has just hated it because he doesn't understand it it's uh it's just it's just a matter of personal taste and you know each to their own at the end of the day i i um just for the record, I haven't been convinced by your answer about photoshopping, but I respect your answer because that's what the industry is doing. And it doesn't matter what I think anyway, but I guess that you're, you're right. It's each to their own. And if you see a photograph and you're connected to it for whatever reason, and whether it's being photoshopped or not, it doesn't matter, right? It's, it's a connection to that particular photograph. Yes, yes. Oh, but, but I get your point of view because sometimes it looks a little bit too much. Mm. But now, that's our opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's our opinion. Okay, let's move on from photoshopping and let's go back to when you first bought your first mirrorless camera. Did you did you also invest in other things like light meters and tripods and all that sort of stuff back then? Uh, no, I obviously invested in the first lens, but mm. um, uh, it was only a, a, your classic uh, 50 millimeters lens and people call it uh, nifty uh 50 because it's like the classic lens and uh that uh everyone buys as a first lens uh oh. and um what kind uh, of camera was it uh it was a it was actually a um uh let me think let me think it was a canon a yeah, canon it was it was an old canon okay um and then uh yes i bought my first tripod but that was probably after uh, a year or so. Uh, initially, I was just putting my camera on top of walls and uh, garbage bins and stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> getting getting that basic in order to, to capture, to take the pictures. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to make a note here that if there's anybody listening from Canon today, uh, and when Pietro becomes super famous worldwide, you got to remember that he started with your product, okay? So just a, oh, a although note. then although then I switched over, I went over Sony. <laughs> you know, okay, cool. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer customer. I, 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 any camera will work. My girlfriend has got a. My partner actually has got a, a Canon, and I still yeah. use it. I got a Sony and use the Sony. If yeah. someone gives me a Panasonic, I use a Panasonic. I don't really care about brands. People do you, do you find really that cameras? Uh, do you find that cameras? Uh, you know, different cameras are good for different settings. Uh, 
Uh, now, but I find that different cameras have different colors and different way to capture the light. Mm -hmm. So I adapt my um, uh, the way I take the pictures to the brand of camera, to the model of camera, I'd say. Um, so uh, I, I kind of feel like um, now that I, I, I get to access to different cameras of the Sony uh, uh, Canon or mm -hmm. even just my drone or the GoPro, each sensor has different qualities and I, I can use it to pursue my artistic vision. Mm. Now that's something that's really changed over the last 20 years within camera gear is that you talk about drones now, you talk about uh, action cameras like GoPro and stuff. Those things weren't around 20 years ago and now they're almost part of a photographer's kit that they have to have, right? Yes, yes, of course, especially when you go traveling and if you want to capture behind the scene mm. and all this um, you know, fancy new stuff. Mm. Definitely having uh, these little cameras uh, uh, helped you a lot. And also, is um, we, we are very lucky because we can, um, uh, we have different ways to post uh, um, our photography. So if I, if I want to make, um, um, I'll just think about drones before people had to fly on helicopters. And that was very expensive. Today, you buy a drone and you can buy a drone for as little as with a decent camera for as little as probably $400. But if you look at second hand market, even cheaper, yep. and you can take picture from the sky and it's a completely different way to look at the world. Mm. Uh, same things with the GoPro. You can take pictures underwater before you have to pay a lot of money to get the right camera housing. Now with the GoPro, you just go straight underwater and take the picture. Mm. Do those, what's happened to that industry? Have those companies that used to make those housing com completely out of business now? Or is there no, 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 still they, a need for them? They, 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 there's still a need for them because then if you if you want to really get up, if you want to take pictures for a, a campaign and you need to print a huge print, well, that's the case when you've got to use your professional camera and you've got to put your professional camera in a proper housing, obviously, to go mm. underwater. So it's more for the pro and advertising industries because those are the, the, the advertising industry. That's that's industry where they need really big prints, obviously. So those housings and that are still around. They're just used for a more specific task these days than every general person having one for underwater. Yes, shots. yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Now, because now you've got cheaper alternatives, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Now you talked about um, you love landscape photo photography and you got into that. Why? Why particularly landscape? What attracted you to that area of photography? Um, well, uh, I've got to admit that I started actually with landscape, but then for a, a, a really long time, I went on with just portrait, mm. um, especially in the first part of my traveling adventure. That was um, a way to connect with people for me. Um, and then, yes, at some point I decided to switch over to landscape again, but uh, I wouldn't define myself specifically landscape photography. I, I define myself photographer in general because I, um, I, I still like taking pictures of people and landscape um, but uh, I find landscape photography, uh, photography really intriguing because it really gives me the time to stop and uh, appreciate the scene of what I'm looking at hmm. and um, it, it kind of makes me, it helps me because I can capture an emotion, a feeling that, that, I, that, I, that I have inside and I can show it to someone else. Mm. So that's that's probably the most rewarding thing in landscape photography. Mm. Um, it's and then obviously because I, I, I love hiking, uh, I do a little bit of climbing. Uh, it's um, uh, it's a good way to uh, do a little bit of uh, physical activity because I need to bring my camera, my lenses, and so on with me on my back. <laughs> mm. Let's talk about that in terms of carrying all your stuff around. Has that has that transformed over the years as well? Has it become easier to take your camera gear around today than it was seven years ago? Um, yes, I think that became easier too. Um, there's, there's a lot of companies these days they produce uh, good quality backpacks and carry-ons to uh, just, you know, aim to photographers. And uh, that obviously makes your life easier because they, you know, they, they tend to organize the space and protect everything they put inside the backpack or the carry on and so on. So of course that is easier these days. Um, I'd say uh, one thing that hasn't changed is that it's up to the photographer to understand uh, what are the tools needed 
to get the job done. Yep. Um, I find that probably the easiest thing is to not bring all of your equipment because otherwise you get lost with everything you have, but just stick to a few little things and uh, uh, and make your backpack lighter so you can actually explore further, you can walk more, and you can get to the locations that you want to shoot uh, mm. and actually be still fresh mm. and able to think through and take the pictures the way you want it. Uh, some photographers still like to take with them as many things as they can, but then it's it's kind of like you know heavy stuff, especially if you like climbing. Mm. So have the <clears throat> have the luggage uh, manufacturers over the years improved the quality of their backpacks and things yes. to store gear? Yeah. Yes, definitely quality of material. I just bought a new backpack. Actually, I didn't buy it. I had it for my birthday. That was um, the 17th of August. My partner bought me a new backpack for cameras, mm. and um, is um, uh, pretty much like uh, super durable because the material that they, they choose these days are very, very durable, waterproof, uh, dust proof, opening. At, I've got like probably a hundred openings so that I can open the side of the backpack where I've got the right lens or where I've got my camera. I can store the camera with the lens itself on, even mm. if it's a big telephoto lens. I can store my drone with my cameras and still have it protected. So it's a uh, uh, yeah, definitely uh, they uh, improve um, uh, uh, all the these, uh, backpacks and this carry on because the quality of the materials has, has improved, mm. and I guess it's gonna still improve. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely. the same things with you know extreme sports outfit. If you think about um, Boratex as a material for yep. waterproof um, yep. shells, it's the same things with backpack and carry on. They study new materials, and you got the best. Hmm. future advancement now let's talk about culture and photography and you're an italian and as we all know italians are very passionate people they're also very um epivescent i use the word epivescent when it comes to you know you, you talk with your hands you're very yes, yes very yes. <laughs> very visual when it comes to that so i would expect that photography is a very good fit to the italian culture are there a lot of photographers in italy um uh, I say that yes, there's there's a lot of photo not a lot of photography uh, amongst my friends, mm. but I actually know a lot of uh, uh, photographers, uh, Italian photographers traveling around the world, especially mm. landscape photographers, mm. and also if you go to North Italy and especially around Milan, uh, fashion photography is a big thing. So mm. yeah, a lot mm. of uh, uh, portrait fashion photographers up there. And who are some of the most well-known worldwide Italian photographers? Oh, well, um, I can tell you that one of my favorite photographers um, is actually a, a very well-known landscape photographer, recognized for his moody landscape, mm. um, and uh, um, especially for um, mountain landscape, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, it's not completely Italian, uh, it's got an Italian name, Italian surname, but he's American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. This is uh, my uh, favorite photographer. Uh, his, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Elia Locardi. He's an Italian name, an uh, Italian surname, but he's not really Italian. He's, uh, he's American, but he's been living in Italy uh, to mm -hmm. kind of like get in touch with his own background for, for a long while. He's another uh, traveling landscape photographer. He's very well known because he's all, uh, older than being a, a great photographer. He's also a great educator. He does a lot of videos. Um, and um, uh, workshop all around the world. Um, so I'd say if you're passionate about landscapes and uh, beauty around the world, go and check him out. Uh, his work is definitely amazing. Um, and send, send me, uh, can you send me a link to his work and I'll put that on the uh, description yes, of the podcast. De so definitely, definitely. And I've got, I've got another a couple of Italian photographers. But, uh, I can't remember the name because they're all new photographers. It's the new generation of photographers. Uh, but uh, if you want to, mm. I, I, I go and check it out the um, uh, portfolio and I link it to you. I'm sure that you can um, appreciate their photography. Although I've got to say that there's a lot of Photoshop in their work. Okay. <laughs> I'm warned, Mark. There's lots of Photoshop in their work. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm watching you out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know I, whether I'll even check it out now, Petra. It told me. But I've got to say that once you check stuff. it out, you can kind of understand the purpose. <laughs> like, you know, that they're using Photoshop for a specific reason. 
yeah okay fair enough do you know of um have you heard of peter mckinnon from canada yes isn't he extremely awesome yes he's definitely awesome um and i and i watched some of his videos it's a it's a, it's a very cool guy called dude yeah, he's insane and uh i came i actually started off watching casey neistat years ago and i came across peter mckinnon and um this guy does some incredible photography things yeah like um and actually that's where i got the idea about you because i kind of thought well hey you could be the italian version of peter mckinnon you could be the guy out there with you know doing all that sort of stuff because i think you've got that kind of talent man i, I really do well the name the name is the same <laughs> <laughs> the name is the same that's 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 how i introduce myself to english people i say peter because pietro yeah. is a little bit too complicated for them yeah. it'll be like Pedro. <laughs> someone in new zealand call me petrol like petrol station <laughs> He probably called you bro as well, yeah? So not just... Uh, oh, yes, of course, of course, bro. Bedroom. But, <laughs> but well, you know what? I, I like that, bro, because you make me think about New Zealand, bro, and cuz. <laughs> we got to we got to get uh, back to Peter McKinnon here because we've got to get the guy onto Italian coffee. He drinks this. I don't know what he drinks. He drinks this. Um, actually, I think it is Italian <laughs> coffee that he drinks. So you've got some kind of connection. We'll see what we can do there. But, yeah, he's a guy that stands out for me. And he, he's really taken photography to the next level when it comes to education because I think because he's the young, cool dude that he is, he kind of connects with people. He's a, he's a very good educator. He's a very good presenter. And he's able to get that technical side of photography across in a way that makes it really cool. Do you do you find that? Yes, yes, I, I definitely agree. It's um, uh, I um, really look at him uh, in um, I look up at him because it's it's great the way he can work on both platforms. So he works as a photographer, but he also works as a videographer. Mm. And the way he uses YouTube to explain things and to um, make photographer easier for everyone mm. is, is actually great and I, I, I love that um, as I was saying before I, I love to get to that kind of stage where I, I can actually teach photography and share something else other than just a picture mm. and Peter McKinnon is one of, of uh, those guys who uh, actually achieved that mm. and mm. it's definitely beautiful to, to, to look at what he does and same things you could say for uh, the guy that I, I was telling you before Laya Locardi mm -hmm. There's a lot of videos on uh, him on uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, great educator and, and it's great to look at the videos. Um, yeah, I'll check him YouTube, out. I haven't seen him before. It's, YouTube is, is definitely a great source and is a uh, it's, it's a great way to to improve your photography because with all this photography uh, giving uh, releasing videos every day, they, they uh, it's it's just a, a very very good way to. To learn without having to go through a lot of uh, struggle or selecting books or mm. uh you know it's a bit going, before going to workshops yeah. or classes or whatever right yeah mm. exactly it's, although I, I still recommend going to workshop and classes because it's the best way to connect with other people and that connection is what is going to make you uh, become a better photographer if you close yourself in a room mm. uh, watching just videos you're never going to get a, you're never going to become a great photographer mm. that's a good it's point. the connection with people mm. that's a really good point and it's 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 all about that connection mm. with people mm. connection with the nature and it's, connection is everything so let's get back to your connection with your photography and yes how do you choose the landscapes that you want to shoot so when, when i look on your um social media sites and i look at your photography i thought i wonder what inspired him to go there to take that photograph what how do you come about those things there's um there's two things i specifically do i um get inspiration from other photographers then i check locations on uh, uh google um and uh very often it could be google maps uh and i kind of like trying to try to figure out how to capture the same place in a different way from a different perspective mm. um and sometimes i just go and check out a cool place and i, I drive past something nice uh stop and take a picture because obviously every time that i, that I go around i've got my camera with me so it depends if it's um, a photography trip uh, or it's just a, a pleasure trip and i take pictures because I'm passing by something nice. Mm. So for example, my trip in Italy was obviously to see my family after a long time mm. and uh, to uh, take my partner, which is Australian to Italy. She, she, she 
it's been a first time in Italy. Mm. And it was all about showing at places. So as whenever I had the opportunity to stop and um, look, I, I was looking at something nice and I was like, okay, I, I can see a picture there. I, I got my camera out and snapped away. Um, but some, some other time, uh, I just go there for photography. So for example, Iceland uh, is going to be my next trip in uh, uh, January. And that is uh, my photography trip. I go there and I, uh, I study the place, uh, the places where I want to go before actually going. Um, kind of look at different uh, perspective from other photographers. Uh, so I already got an idea of what I'm going to do because obviously I need to make the most out of my time. Mm, that's cool. I've got a question about your girlfriend going to Italy though. So <clears> you <throat> said that it was her first trip to Italy? Yes. Did she come back five kilos heavier than she was when she went over there? We both did. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that she, I think she loved it because she suggested to move back for at least a year, and she she's keen to try to live there. <laughs> you better take it to Iceland. She'll lose weight over there. Oh uh, well, she, she's going to lose weight in Iceland. But then we um, thinking about because I've got another photography trip that I'm planning, and that's the Dolomites in Italy. So uh, mm. well, Italy and Switzerland. Mm. So the idea is to go up there and go for this other photography trip. And even if it's Italy, there's going to be a lot of hiking and climbing up the mountains. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that she can eat and lose weight at the same time. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> now, talking about getting your brand out there and evolving your, you know, you said in the beginning of the show, your dream is to yeah. become a photographic educator. You want to be able to share with people the, the wonderful world of photography. You want to help others get connected to that. So what are your plans? How are you going to do that? Like, you know, everybody's out there snapping photos. How do you become somebody that's going to be famous or well-known enough in that space to make a living out of doing that? Um, I wouldn't say I want to, want to, I want to become famous. I just want to create a community of photographers. So the, the idea is actually, I was actually thinking about doing something like that, creating a small community of photographers to, um, maybe in my same situation, like traveling photographers, uh, put, putting them together and trying to, um, become, uh, like educators all together so it's, it's not just about me I, i'm focusing on creating a community and that's why i told you before for me connection is very important oh. so let's say i get uh four or five photographers on board um and organize um workshops around the world with uh, other guys oh. so yeah just um um this is my my little plan but we'll, we'll see how we go it takes time to make connections so you want to do workshops with other photographers. So you want to collaborate with other photographers and then you want to travel to different parts of the world to do that. Is that right? Yes. Yes. That's definitely. Although, although I've got to say that I, I we love to be based in Italy because I'm missing my food very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you can't find good Italian food in Sydney. Uh, I can, I can, but, um, but there's, there's amazing chef, uh, in, in Sydney and it's probably one of the best places in the world where you get, uh, to, taste a lot of different foods from all around the world mm. but uh i've got to say that the quality of the product itself is different so uh, mm. uh, that depends by the, the sun by the quality of the soil by the quality of the water you can't do much about it it's, it's just hey, the hey, way hey, the ingredients hey, are come on tell tell the truth there's nothing like mama's home cooking yeah well of course of course <laughs> that ends why my, my girlfriend is actually learning from my mom they exchanged a couple of recipes and now she's oh. she's, she's giving it a go that's very smart of you. That's a very good strategy. <laughs> well, very it's good strategy. a it's an investment. <laughs> it's an investment. Oh, don't let you don't let her hear this uh, podcast. <laughs> no, no, she, she she knows that. Um, it's a it's a long term commitment. Uh, you know, if it's a long term yeah. commitment, uh, you need to do some sort of an investment. And uh, the Italian cooking is definitely uh, a nice investment. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure that she's happy to learn. Let, let's face it, once you're in the Italian family, you're there to stay. And it's a long, long journey, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But, you know, I'm, in my case, I'm, I'm in a Vietnamese family. She's Australian, but with Vietnamese background. So. Oh, okay. That's a classic <laughs> uh, combination. Yeah? Yes, well, but... You're never going to have a problem with finding good food between the two of you. That should be uh, very easy. Yeah? No, definitely, definitely. That's, that's one mm. of the things that we get taught all the time that... Uh, Sometimes I cook, sometimes she cooks for friends and they're always very happy to come along and share food with us. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Now, for everybody that's listening today, if you're sitting out there and you're a photographer and you love traveling and doing photography, I'm going to put, of course, the link to Pietro's um, social media sites on the podcast description. So if you've got an idea and you've got a desire and an energy and a passion like Pietro has to collaborate around photography around the world, get in touch with each other and see whether you can make something happen. Who knows? This could be the start of something fantastic and you guys or girls could get together and and make an awesome collaboration out of that petro are you okay with me putting a connection to you on facebook on the uh, podcast yes that that would be great that'd be great it's it's an amazing idea actually Mm, okay cool now let's uh we've talked a lot about the positive side of photography and let's Mm -hmm. face it it's a fantastic thing to do but are there any downsides what are some of the struggles you've had around photography does it become difficult sometimes for whatever reason well, uh, photography, like everything else in life, is uh, it's it's hard. Look, before photography, um, I come from uh, sales, and uh, there's uh, I, I can kind of compare the two things because uh, there's challenges in photography that they are pretty much related to sales. Um, you know, it's not it's not always easy to to sell your photography. It's not easy to um, even like strive to always do the best. Um, it's you. You definitely need to be very um, focused on your photography. You need to, to be very proactive about what you do. Uh, there's no one is going to come to you and say, "Well, you know, I, I'll give you this job or uh, I'll give you this money." You have to fight to get the job. You have to fight to get the money because you're basically working for yourself. Mm. So the, one of the struggles for photographers, I think, is. Uh, being your sales manager, your marketing manager, <laughs> and your accountant manager, <laughs> you're gonna be able to do everything on your own, basically, mm. uh, unless you are um, lucky enough to get someone to do that for you. But um, at most of the cases, obviously, that is not possible. So, uh, and then the other thing is that obviously, there's um, there's a lot of photographers these days. So it's um, and there's a lot of very very good photographers. So one of the most important thing is try to find um, your own niche and what you really like about photography. And because otherwise, yes, it's kind of like an overcrowded um, place right now. Uh, because obviously, because of social, so you know, there's there's a there's a good side about the socials and there's also a bad side about the social. And the other um, really hard thing to do is that. Um, Obviously, uh, you get to spend a lot of time on your own. And when you spend a lot of time on your own, you have a lot of time to think about stuff. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I'm, uh, I've been traveling a lot and I've been moving from one place to another. And uh, I, I've got to say that uh, I uh, struggle, especially in the beginning, because with photography, I had to be by myself in a new place. Um, And yes, as I said before, there was a lot of thinking and uh, I struggled with a little bit of um, uh, mental health. I I still do this day. Um, It's, uh, it's, it's, and I think like, you know, if if you're a little bit of an artist, you um, can kind of relate because this um, little issue um, are something that you actually put into your photography, into your music, or into your heart. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so it's uh, one, one of the biggest challenges, definitely the uh, constant uh, pressure that you put on, on yourself to do everything in the right way, which is like, as I said before, selling uh, the marketing, the accounting and the photography itself and the editing and uh, uh, just pushing yourself all the time to come up with an idea and that is not always easy and you know that's that the famous uh, artistic block when you reach that block uh, it gets very hard it eats hard and uh yeah i, I met a lot of people depressed because of it mm. uh, and then it's on you to try to snap out of it and uh, come out with fresh ideas and mm. that's why i told you before the connection with people it's mm. very important and that's why i say that i'd like to create something with other photographers because that connection pushes you out um, of these um, um, little troubles here and there. And, uh, you know, it's the, the, the ultimate things in life is community and being surrounded by uh, people that you, uh, you 
like, you appreciate their the job, their work, you appreciate what they do. Um, and that's, that's a secret to um, be, I think for me, that's a secret to be a good person and also a good photographer. Well, listen, I want to, I want to thank you for just sharing that last piece because it was very honest and, and it showed your vulnerability and I can relate to that because I'm sitting here on the other end of the, the line today talking to you about your photography journey and I, I've just started this podcast journey and a lot of the things that you've just shared with me I can relate to and it is difficult at times because you are doing all this because you're passionate about it and you want to succeed in your own way whichever that is for success and you put a lot of pressure on yourself to do that so I, I wanted to have you on the show today because I wanted to share your journey in respect to not only do I think you're a fantastic photographer but you're a very authentic person and if there are people listening out there who are having a struggle in life today and you've got a passion like Pietro has to to do photography get in contact with each other because we can all help each other out and I'm going to make a commitment to you Pietro today online right here on the show and that commitment is let's track each other and let's help each other on this journey because we're both on a journey to try and take our passion I've got a passion to become one of the best podcasters in the world in the travel industry and you want to become one of the best educators in the photography industry so along the way we're confronted by a lot of the same challenges so I'm happy to have you back on the show at different stages of your journey to share how you're going, where you're going, um, after you've been to Iceland, come back on the show again and tell us how that trip was. We'll put up some photographs of your, your trip to Iceland and we'll keep in touch with that because I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I think that connection with like-minded people is a very important thing to have. Would you be open to that suggestion? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's actually make it a thing. Let's, uh, let's come up with um, other episodes where we can actually talk about the um, trips and uh, maybe if we, if, meanwhile, I connect with other photographers in the same situation where we can get other photographers on board and talk about their vision and they, um, you know, their ideas. Uh, I, th I think we can definitely make, um, make a few episodes about photography and about life in general. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> well, we will do that. And the other thing that I'm finding through my show is that I'm having so many amazing guests coming on and telling me their travel stories from all over the world and who knows what kind of doors they can open because one of my goals with the podcast show is to connect that community of guests that i have on my show because i think that's another really exciting opportunity for those people to see what opportunities of collaboration could come out of that connection so once we've finished the show today i will put you into that bucket of guests that have been on the show and we can see what we can make out of that as well Yes, you should actually do uh, my suggestion. If you like, you should do a community yeah. on uh, a Facebook community where everyone can just collaborate, talk, and you know, just I was, as I was saying before, that uh, mm. bring back that sense of community, connection with other people. Especially if you're a traveler, you know that you need that kind of connection. You need uh, some sort of anchor point. Well, I can tell you, I've got some good news for you, Pietro. That that community, that group actually already exists on our Facebook page. So if you go to the uh, Global Travel Channel podcast group page, it's yes. it's open to anybody to join um, who's either been on the show or who has connections to the show. And we're already starting to build our global community there. So I'll make sure that you've got the link to come and join us on that group as well. Yes, I make it, uh, I promise you that I'm definitely going to be present on that group because I uh, like and enjoy the idea very much. Okay, fantastic. Now, before we finish the show today, what are, what are you going to be your next? Um, you've told us about Iceland, but are there any short term trips that you're going to do here in Australia for photography in the upcoming months? Um, I'm, um, I'm actually thinking that um, uh, probably before Iceland, it will be a bit hard. But I think that after Iceland, I might decide to move um, on the Australian up for the year. Uh, hmm. That's that's a plan. So we'll see how we go. And uh, yeah, I might, I might be able to capture a little bit of a um, uh, mountains here in Australia because uh, I think that's probably one of my, one of my favorite things, mountains. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, if that if that happens, I'll I'll be happy to share with you guys the results uh, of that um, change for a year. And then, as I said, afterwards, we'll straight uh, to the Alps in Italy, kind of like uh, the the big trip. So it requires a little bit of planification and saving also <laughs> yeah i bet now that's a really interesting concept because when you talk about the alps in europe it's a complete 
completely different concept to the mountains in Australia. And I think that that mountain range in Australia that you're talking about has something unique to itself as well, you know, because people don't really associate mountains with Australia. So I think whatever you bring away from that um, is going to be extraordinary. So we'll definitely share those online with everybody. Yes, yes. I've, I've um, already started Googling a little bit of uh, places just to have, um, to have an idea. It's, um, it's a bit, uh, you know, it's a day trip from Sydney. Um, so I'm definitely thinking that given that I'd be living probably for an hour away from uh, the Australian Alps, that would be oh. like, you know, a, a thing for me to go there at least once or twice a week and take a picture of the mountains and, yeah, and capture different landscapes. And I think there's, um, uh, it's uh, the mountain range yeah, uh, it, uh, definitely very different, uh, but uh, what I like of the Australian mountains is uh, the loneliness that you get from the pictures that I've seen so far, the sense of loneliness, the sense of is yes. isolation. While isolation. from, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the European Alps is a little bit different because you know that the Alps are in the center of like, you know, in between Italy, Swiss, uh, France and Liechtenstein. So there's Austria, there's a, there's a lot of countries all around the Alps. So it's, mm -hmm. you, you definitely see like little, very high mountains and then this little, little town here and there. Um, mm -hmm. and why in Australia you don't get to see the little town in the mountains because they isolate the national park. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That's true. So why don't you tell us your three hot tips for making sure that you take a great photograph? Okay. The first tip is look at your you look at, at the landscape and uh, enjoy the landscape because we often forget to look at it. And then make sure to use your camera and look at the landscape through your camera because uh, it's a little bit different from what your eyes can can see and perceive mm. and that's what is going to help you to get the right um the right perspective um and the right crop and then after that just a little bit of um practice with your um you know the, the lightning uh and uh, uh, basic function of a camera, so ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, mm -hmm. the, the three most basic mm -hmm. things. And once you learn how to use them and combine them, you can actually take your photography to the next level. So it's, uh, it's definitely just like enjoy your picture, make sure to get the right composition, and make sure to know at least these three simple little things of your camera. And then you pretty much set to take great pictures. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love tip number one, making sure that you actually do take in your surroundings before you take the photograph. Well, <laughs> you know, you capture with, with your with your with your camera, with your photography, you capture a feeling. If you don't have a feeling, what are you gonna capture yeah, then? Yeah, that's a really good point. Listen, Pietro, it's been fantastic having you on the show today. I want to thank you very much for joining me. I'm sure the audience have really enjoyed listening to one, your Italian accent. Secondly, all your great <laughs> advice and your journey uh, through the photography world. We wish you all the very best. You and I are going to stay in touch as we've committed to each other. And I really like you to come yes. back on the show after you've been to Iceland and tell us all about your trip over there. Would you do that for us? Yes. Well, let's let's make it a commitment. I'm, I, I've commit myself to come back. So let's let's just keep in touch and decide what's the best time of what's the best time for you to, to get back and uh, produce another nice show. Um, Fantastic. I'm, I'm Fantastic. very happy to collaborate. Thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to say ciao for now and uh, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> well, ciao and um, buonasera or buonanotte. There we go. Fantastic to hear from Pietro today talking about photography, food in Italy, food in Australia, food in New Zealand. It seems as though we better have a episode on food shortly. That's given me an idea. So that's the end of this particular episode. If you're looking for other episodes on the Global Travel Channel podcast show, you can find them on our website at www.globaltravelchannel.com. You can also download our episodes from places like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and there's a whole list on our website. Don't forget our Patreon page. If you want to support us, you can, and all your contributions are greatly appreciated. Okay, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed bringing it to you. My name is Mark Philpot. Until we meet next time, bon voyage.